family, God bless you. This is Pastor Larry, and as we always say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, good to see you here on a Monday night. Man, listen, we have something great in store for you on tonight. Here's what I need you to do. First of all, like our page, all right? Because when you like our page, we know that you're there. And then share our page. This way you can invite somebody into the conversation and then subscribe to our page. I believe the more subscribers we get, the more the, the broader our viewing audience can be. All right. Listen, tonight is a call in night. So stay tuned and get your heart prepared and be blessed with the word of God on tonight. All right, all right. Welcome back, family. As we always, again, we say this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Want to welcome you all to the place where real change begins because we are changing lives that will ultimately impact the world. Listen, God bless to all of you all, wherever you are in your part of the world, to our uh, e church family. God bless you all who are watching through all of our different outlets. God bless you. Thank all of you all who have uh, called us and contact us. Listen, we thank God that you all are viewing in. Listen, for those of you who have not contacted Pastor Larry, please give me an email, all right, at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. That's moments with an S, momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. Or call our uh, ministry number at 773-785-0412. That's 773-785-0412. Or like, like tonight, you can call our online number at 708-821-6527. That's 
1-800-273-8227. Listen, I love to hear from you. All right? Listen, we enjoy hearing from you because you guys are here. We are here. And that, listen, you all are, 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 are uh, the gas, the whip to our candle that keeps us burning, keeps us fueled, keeps us full of fire. So, again, thank you all for being here so uh, patiently, so lovingly. Oh, dear God, for over a year now, you guys have been here. And listen, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. All right, listen, join us for our reading for the month. Listen, we are still in uh, March, and today is chapter what? Come on. What's today's chapter? Help me out. Chapter number 13. All right. If you are in the wrong chapter, <laughs> we are in chapter 13. Listen, for the month of April, well, at, yeah, for uh, beginning Thursday, we will be in Galatians. And I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, dear God, we'll be in 2 Corinthians, and we're going to read through Colossians, one, one chapter a day, all right? One chapter a day as we move through Corinthians, and then uh, Galatians, Ephesians, and, on, and so on, as we move through those chapters, uh, uh, those books, we're doing one chapter, listen to me, one chapter a day, beginning at 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, we're doing one chapter a day. Come on, what did I say? We're doing one chapter a day, all right? And so, uh, again, beginning on Thursday, which is April 1st, beginning April 1st, make sure you be a part and join us for our reading. Listen, it is our goal, our endeavor to read through the entire New Testament, all right? And so, listen, it, it's been fun. It's been a blast. Listen, y'all, many of us are learning to get into the Word of God. And so, again, I encourage you all to join us. If you all are seeing uh, uh, spots, spots in the video, it's not UFOs, okay? <laughs> it's just me, all right? So we'll be all right. Let's deal with it. Let's get through it. Listen, don't forget, on tomorrow morning, listen, on tomorrow morning, I want you to join us in prayer tomorrow morning at the 10 o'clock hour, man. It's going to be great, all right? Tomorrow morning at the 10 o'clock hour, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Join us on our prayer conference line. I believe it will bless your life for the better. You can give us a call at 978-990-5000. That's 978-990-5000. Access code is 355794. That's 355794. If you don't want to pray, that's fine. Tune in, call in, and, uh, and listen in. So the Gloria said, I finished First Corinthians already. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, but stay with us, okay? Go back to chapter 13. <laughs> Glory to God. Go back to chapter, uh, let me see, go to 14 then and start from there and finish out with, with us. And this way, pick up, you can pick up with us at Second Corinthians. Listen, y'all, I'm going to tell you something. I have been enjoying reading the Word of God. Listen, if, if you are me, a study of of the word of God, as I read the word, listen to the word, it begins to paint a picture in my heart, and I follow the thought process of the writer and see what God is trying to say. And so, again, I encourage you all to follow along with us. I know it's going to bless you. If it bless you the way it blessed me, man, listen, your your spirit man is like John when uh, Mary ran to Elizabeth. Your spirit man is, is leaping. It's leaping because you're learning and, and, and receiving so much word as you flow through the scripture and see how one, because the uh, the Bible, you all, is really in, in each chapter or each book is one continual letter. That, that, that's what it, what it really is. King James broke it up so that we could uh, uh, break it down and and, and uh, make for easier reading. But it's really one continual letter. The Apostle Paul and those who wrote the uh, New Testament, uh, this is one, those Letters are one continuation of a thought or, or uh, of many thoughts, but one continual letter. And so listen, I encourage you, listen, join in, have fun reading, let your spirit man grow, let your mind begin to expand and understand and see what God is saying to his church. want to give a, a few quick shouts out to those of you all who are online already. want to say hey to Lady Carol. God bless you. Hey, my mother. God bless you, honey. I see you. Love you, girl. Uh, God bless you, Sister Gloria. I see you. 
Hey, Pastor Marks, God bless you, sir. Hey, Auntie, I see you there. God bless you. Sister Bobby Jane Robinson, God bless you. LT, my man, God bless you. Sister Arnetta, I see you there. God bless you as well. Uh, let me see. Hey, Pastor Lonnie, bless you, man. Good to see you tonight. Hope you call in tonight. Let me see who else, who else. Sister, see, Minister Anderson, God bless you. Good, good, good to see you all there on tonight. Let me see. Let me see who is I miss Tommy, my main man. What's going on, Tommy? God bless you too, sir. Sister Michelle, I see you. There you go. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Minister Karen, God bless you and to all of you all. If I didn't call your name, don't feel bad. It's okay. And to those who are in the background, listen, thank God for my producer and producers who are in the background, those who make it happen. Listen, y'all, Pastor Larry does not do this by himself. They are those in the background who who make Pastor Larry look good, and I thank you all so much. Uh, I do. I appreciate it. Uh, you all who are in the background making things happen for us, and you guys make us look good. So God bless you. All right, let's pray. Let's get into the word tonight. Father, tonight we thank you again. Thank you, Father, so much for your loving kindness and for the multitude of your tender mercy. Now, God, tonight, since we're here, speak to us in a clear and concise manner. Spirit of the living God, tonight I pray that as we dig into your word, that you would speak to us, God, as we hold a conversation. God, you see our hearts, our hearts desire to please you. Speak to us, God, today. Give us insight. We thank you. We bless you and look forward to what you have to say. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, family, come on. Let's dig into the word tonight. We are in Matthew 28. Look at verse number 18. Matthew the 28th chapter, let's focus our attention to verse number 18. Look at what it says. And Jesus came unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Listen, we have we have started a series, you all, dealing with the church's role in a changing society. All right, stay tuned. I'm going to have you call in in a few minutes. And so we've been dealing with the church's role. And this is important because if you and I don't understand and don't understand what the church is, what our role is, Understand, you and I, we are the, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the ones who've been sanctified or set apart for the master's use. It is, in fact, our job. Hear me. It is, in fact, our job, your job and my job to understand what is our role. You're saying, Pastor Larry, what do you mean by you, when you say what is our role? Simply saying this. Society, as we know it, you all, is changing. Oh, dear God, is it changing? Man is changing. And I mean, it is changing rapidly. I mean, just today, I mean, the, 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 the thought process, you all, of this generation has totally turned. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how it's turned. Uh, today, as I was heading into the city, I was sitting at a stoplight. There were three lanes, one going left, well, one going north, one going south, two of them heading west. And there was a gentleman who came from the rear down the hill and dear God had to be going between 80 and 100 miles an hour. Mind you, I am at a light. He went straight through the light. Thank God no cars were coming because it is at that juncture someone would have been killed in that intersection. And I mean, all through the day, I saw folks just driving recklessly. I mean, intentionally running through stop signs and going around in the wrong lane. And I mean, I mean, dear God, full throttle. And I'm like, dear God, what is our world coming to? And so here's my question that I want to pose to us tonight. What is our role? We see the world is changing. What is our role? Because oftentimes we allow the world to define us, right? They define how we should dress. If you don't believe it, wear something too short. 
they will they will point it out to you and make you and make you think you're going to hell because they'll tell you uh, your dress is too short, wear something too tight, or even too big. They will define how a Christian should dress. Be angry and get mad. You know, I don't mean cuss. Just be mad. And they'll say, I thought you were a Christian. And so they have their belief system on how they think you and I should carry ourselves. And so tonight, my question I want to pose to you tonight is, what is the church's role? What is our role? I understand our role is to win the loss. Hear me. I understand that. But what can we do better? Because there has to be something that I believe that we can use to win this generation. You know, I know about 10, 15 years ago, we called one generation, Generation X. Listen, but then as I look back, that same generation kind of reminded me of us. You know, it reminded me of my generation and the dumb things we did. And then I look back a little further and uh, at the history of our forefathers, I said, dear God, the only difference is that there's a progression. Today, I was talking to my son and I, I uh, posed the same question to him. And I told him, I said, when you, I said, you all were the millennials. But it is the this alpha generation, which is the generation of, 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 of my granddaughter. She's a part of the alpha generation. Hey, Sister Olivia, God bless you. I didn't see you tonight. Good, uh, thank you for joining us. This alpha generation are those that are about 13 on down. This is that alpha generation. And listen, that alpha, gener that alpha generation thinks totally different from the millennials, right? I mean, they were they were raised on TikTok, right? And so TikTok has be has replaced the Bible. Right. And so they see life through a whole different set of lenses. And so my question then is then what do we do as a church? What do we do? Uh, as my grandfather said, uh, we can't beat the fire out of them. You know, and so what can we do? What do we, what does, does the church do? You and I, something practical. What do we do? Pastor, do we pray for them? Yes, I get that. Yes, prayer is in order. But how do we reach them? With what method do we reach them with? You know, again, the message, the message of the gospel of Jesus never changes. Hear me. The message never changes. But what are some of the methods that we can use? And here's why I asked. Today I pulled the same question to uh, someone who is part of the my, my linear generation. And my question was, what type of messages are you all hearing? Because I heard Bishop Jakes say this one time. He says, while what you're saying may be right, but you don't qualify to say it. What simply means this, what many of them are saying may be scriptural, but they themselves have not lived it out. And so they don't know it to be true left because of someone else said it. And so my generation, I mean, I'm 60 years old now. And so there, there are some things I walked through. But when my mother was my age or younger, there were some things that I hadn't seen yet. And so I did not understand or know God the way she knows God. But now that I moved up to the age they classify as senior, oh God, help, help our generation. They call, listen, we move into the area of uh, they call us old fogies now. <laughs> Dear God, what's the world coming to? And so since they call us old fogies now, the question is then, how do I take my experience, take the gospel that has changed my life and altered my life and turn it into what it is now? How do I take, how do we take the same gospel and implement it into this next generation so that they can take it in turn teach their generation. You see, in my house, I have, well, we have baby boomers, we have the millennials, and we have the uh, alpha generation. And then we have, in the middle, the uh, X generation, which would be uh, my kids who are uh, 45 to 35. 
That was generally called the X generation. And so here is our problem. How do we reach each generation successfully? You know, how do we do it? Because we know that their attention, their, their span of, of uh, attention is really, really short. And so the question is tonight, how do we motivate them as a body of Christ? How do we get them to see God the way we see God? You know, oftentimes I hear my, my uh, mother make reference that uh, she got saved at the age of seven or nine, one of the two. She got saved early in life. Well, you know, I have a nine-year-old granddaughter who's not really trying to speak in tongues at nine. You see, and so my my job is to get her to fall in love with Jesus and to see him uh, from a different perspective, right? I have a, a, a uh, how does Kendall, seven, a seven-year-old grandson who's really not trying to do the Jesus stuff. He'll come to church because, you know, Poppy is a preacher. So he, he, he really comes to see us and come and see his uh, um, his Gigi and his cousins, you know, and aunties. But the question, how do we get our children to, to come for God? To come because they want to find out what God is all about. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about is how we, we have to live the life before them. All right? We have to live that life before them. As a matter of fact, let's start there. All right? You can call in now, 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. Come on. I am waiting on you. If you don't call, I got a whole lot to say. But come on tonight. Join me tonight in the conversation. Because it starts, family, first with a lifestyle. And listen, if you and I aren't willing to live that lifestyle before our children, we're leaving them up. For chance, we are allowing something else to shape their world because eventually they will look at our lifestyle and they'll hear us say Christians. They will hear us say that we are Christians and they will judge Christianity by what they see us do. All right. Oh, look at that. All right. Got a caller already. Let me see if, if I can get you on. Let me see. Hey, God bless you. Mother Sergeant, cut me down. Cut me down in the background. Hello. Hey, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, come on, dude. Yeah. You all. Yeah, I was looking at your question, and just thinking about it, people are people. It doesn't really matter what age they're still in. They each have that longing on the inside. And I was thinking when I moved here, I went through so much in the neighborhood and I knew God had given me this place. And I began to ask the Lord, God, what to do? Because the kids would just be fighting and trying to set my house on fire, a garage. And I had to have somebody to watch if I went away. And the Lord said, start a Bible class in your home. I got the kids in the neighborhood. I had them in my house every weekend. We had Bible study. I made homemade cookies, hot chocolate if it was cold, homemade cookies, punch if it was hot. Right. I took the kids. We did plays. We carol up and down the street. I got anybody that had a car that would be willing to pick up the neighborhood kids and take them to church. you got to show people you love them, not just preach to them. Right. Reach out to these children. And now to look back and see how some are pastors, some are saved, and even <clears throat> those that really didn't totally commit. When they see me coming, they tell the others, you got to stop that because here Miss Barton, she told us about Jesus. So the hunger is there. Right. No matter what, uh, age you in that same Jesus, that same spirit that drew you will draw them. We got to reach out to them. And I know even going, uh, just a few years back, I went over here to this restaurant and I saw some young guys walk through the door, sneaked in and went and got served. Right, right. I went over to them. I said, scoot over, scoot back. They looked at me like, what? I said, yeah, move over. When they moved over, I began to just share with them 
Didn't nobody hear what I was saying, but just them. I said, you know what you're doing is not right. So many of our young blacks are in jail. Right, right. You're not supposed to do that. And when I finished talking with them, I went on back. I said, okay, I love you. I went on back to my seat after while they walked right out of the door, didn't even eat their food. That would stay with them. I don't know what they call me, old lady, whatever. It didn't really matter. Ooh. But I guarantee you, they wouldn't be so eager to go back and sneak in a door and go try to steal food like that. Right. So we just have to not look at them as being the booger bear. Right. Right. Look at them as souls that need the same Jesus that we have. Right. Speak to them as though it was us, how we would want somebody to come to us. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit would do the drawing. I know it did because I know what happened here in my neighborhood. Right. Right. I know it still works. The same God will work. If you do it his way, allow him to speak through you. And not come at them with a hatchet, but come at them in the love of Christ. They can be strong. You know, something you said that really caught my attention, because all, all, all men want to know they are searching for something. I don't care who they are, yes. because God has placed his spirit in every man so that he can communicate with that individual. And so because the spirit of God is, 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 is in everybody, it's called his breath, his pneuma. And so since it's in every man, it God, uh, uh, every man is looking, searching out, crying out for something. And so you're so true. If we don't, if we don't reach out to them, we're really telling them, you know, that we don't want any uh, thing to do with them. And, 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 and so that's so true. We uh, true. have to be willing to reach out to them and do it, you know, where they are without being uh, so condemning and condescending, but be willing to talk to them and just uh, hit them with the truth. You know, uh, if, if they're wrong, tell them how much Jesus loved them in spite of how wrong they're doing and share our faith and allow that word to, to, uh, to draw them. That's so true. That's so true because there's a hunger and a longing and everybody that's acting a fool really don't want well, to be acting a fool per se. Hey, They're looking for attention. Well, so, uh, you know what? And, I mean, here look like the parents in the neighborhood that was trying to find themselves. Well, I knew who I was, so I reached out to the kids. All right. All right. <laughs> and I feel like this. If it worked for me, it will work for them. I know this God way. has not changed. He has not changed because it's the spirit of God that does the drawing. Right. Our job is to share it. Okay. Share it and then allow the Holy Spirit to do his job. Amen. All right, Dad. Thank you so much uh, for the call. Appreciate it. All right. All right, Mother. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Mother Sergeant, for that call. We had a, uh, another caller just called in. I'm going to call him right back. Listen, come on, uh, give me a call, 708-821-6527. All right, hey, we got another caller. Hey, son, what's going on? Hey, good evening, Pastor. How are you tonight? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. All right. You want to uh, chime in tonight? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, so I, I feel that the, the church has to, to read the younger generation where they are um and, and what i mean by that is uh sometimes it can be uh i guess the the way that church is done can be a little old school uh -huh. nothing is wrong with that uh if you know me you know i love old school old school music you know i like i like tradition uh -huh. but however some some of today's youth are not attracted by the old school way. Okay. So I think we have to change our method on how to reach out to them. All right. I agree with that. I agree with that. Do you have any, uh, what's your thought, uh, thoughts on that? What are some of the ways you think we could, uh, the, the uh, methods we could change to uh, reach this generation? Well, well I guess it's, I guess it's twofold. Uh, then because uh, if, if we can put some of the burden on, some of the older saints to to change their method. I guess we can put some of the burden on. I guess us as well is like the lifestyle that 
you know, some of us younger people live. Like we need to be more active and more proactive, uh, like with, you know, reaching out and like being more involved. Like, you know, they see it like, like you're saying like, okay, yeah, you see us on TikTok, you see us on, you know, Facebook doing everything else, like promoting everything else. But why are we not doing it the same, like, you know, presenting Jesus and Christ the same way? If, if we're doing that, then, you know, and still living that lifestyle, I think, you know, that'll also entice uh, more of the youth as well, too. So I guess uh, to answer that question is like, you know, we need to step up like the ones that are in church. We need to step up and be more active in like proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ and showing that, hey, we still can be, you know, uh, you know, have fun and do whatever, but still live as Christ wants us to live and reaching out to the youth. Oh, okay, so you're saying that uh, I can make you pass the over media. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't get an amen right there. <laughs> I don't think that's quite how I presented it, but, but uh, <laughs> we, we, we can do that. But I mean, I, I, I do understand that because uh, I think one of the hardest things we do is is getting. The uh, the millennials involved, I should say, uh, uh, getting them more acclimated and involved in sharing their faith. You know, uh, one of the things I noticed on social media a lot is that they share uh, the pe people share their pain, their celebrations, they share promotions, but many of them aren't sharing Jesus. You know, and I believe, uh, like you said, if that age group would share Jesus. It would show those who are watching that yes, I can be young, have fun, and still be saved. Right. You know, uh, I recall when I was well younger than you at the time, probably uh, in my twenties, and even after that, we had fun. We hung out, and we were also believers. You know, we had we had fun hanging out with fellow Christians. You know, we did stuff that that, that uh, folks our age did, but but we, we we did it in the spirit of knowing that we were Christians. Now, was everything perfect? No. I mean, sometimes we, we went so far in left field, dear God. But we always came back to realize that we are Christians first and that our lives have to be the example, you see? And so you are so true. And so uh, we got to find some things that we can do to get our youth involved on a daily, uh, a, a weekly basis to get them involved. And uh one of the platforms uh, I want to use is this platform to do to maybe do something with uh, you know your age group and you guys come on hey go for it you know go for it so keep that in mind when I bring it up and uh, it'll be you guys platform to go for it okay absolutely uh, okay look he didn't say no or maybe I I, I will I will work to get it. To get it up and running, and you know, make it the best as possible. All right, I'm gonna shout now. Ready? Get my shot in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, son. Love you, man. <laughs> All right, love you. All right, bye. Listen, come on, give me a call. 708 821 6527. 708 821 6527. Sister Deborah said basketball teams. Now, you know, Sister Deborah, we did that growing up. We got involved in uh, uh, the kids in basketball. We being a part. We had a uh, chess club and chess group. Oh, boy! I'll give me. I'll give me. I'll give me. They called you. I'll give me. They called you right then. All right, y'all. I got somebody on the line. Let me see if I can get the preacher. Bless you, sir. Bless you, man. What's going on? Man, God is good, man. Just trying to live the thing we call life. Hey, I know. Hey, look, I know you. Hey, look, you doing that, man? And doing it large. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. you doing it on the big, baby? The big. <laughs> so, yes, sir. <laughs> all right. So talk to me, Doc. What's going on? How can? Okay, how, so what is our role in the, the church? Yes. The church's role. Okay, man. You know I could be here all night. Hey, but, uh, <laughs> well, hey look, we got thirty-five minutes. So go, go ahead. <laughs> Number one is people are tired of a fake church. Okay. And that is that is huge because a lot of people are holy rollers on Sunday, but the rest of the week they're doing whatever they want to do, however they want to do it. Okay. So in order for the church to uh, be leading in, in the role 
of the change in society, we got to practice what we preach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we can't say Jesus, 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 but then do everything that the world do. That's right. You know, we 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 got to lead by example. Um, you know, when it comes to Sunday school, Bible class, you know, why could say ye be Lord, Lord, but keep not my commandments. That's right. That's I want right. to tell you to come to church and pay tithes, and I don't pay tithes. Or come to church. I want to tell you to come to church, but I'm not on time. Uh oh. I want to tell you how to dress, but I got all the stuff that everybody else is wearing. You oh, know? Lord. So the church has to practice what they preach, and they got to lead by example. In order to start to change the society, mm -hmm. I can't tell someone to, to come and do as I'm doing, and I'm not even doing it. Right, right. Uh, uh, I, I think the Apostle Paul uh, addressed that over in the book of Romans, around the third or fourth chapter. He was uh, preaching to them and telling them uh, about sin. And then in the very next verse, he said, How can you preach about sin when you're under the, the, the same condemnation? That the that's very right. the very thing you're telling others to not do, that's what you're doing. You see, that's right. And so, uh, uh, Pastor, you are absolutely true. The church, the body uh, of Christ, we have to be willing to lead by example. And you know, yes, uh, one of the things I call it often is sacrifice. What that's are right. we willing to sacrifice in our generation to save the next generation? You know. That's right. We had leaders like uh, Dr. King and Malcolm X and all these guys who are willing to sacrifice their lives to, to uh, for the betterment of our generation. But then when I look at our generation, I mean, dear God, what have we done to sacrifice? Yeah, right. You know, it's almost like uh, they're saying, my parents made me go, and so I'm going to let mm -hmm. you do whatever you want to do. And so exactly. here's the problem. We let we let them do what the what they want to do. The problem is the world is educating them and telling them how to think, what to dress, how to dance, what to drink. I mean, the world is telling them everything, and That's right. we're saying we don't care. But, uh, uh, in essence, and so now they're trying to figure out how do I fit in uh, in society coming in through the uh, 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 umbrella of Christianity. And right. they don't match. And then when they look at us, they go, well, wait a minute. Everything you're telling me to not do, that's what you're doing. You know? <laughs> My God. You see? And, and so, like you said earlier about what Paul said in Romans, Paul also told Peter that he had to withstand him to his face. Yes, sir. He said, you being a Jew, you acting as the Gentile. Yes. That's it. You're supposed to be the role model, and you're supposed to be the example but you, how can you do that if you're not being the Jew that you're supposed to be and teaching the Gentile the, the way of Jesus? Exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, one, one of the things I, uh, I, I often tell my kids, I say it's not that the, the uh, temptation was there, uh, wasn't there to drink or do, you know, do stuff. But when I seen people around me that died from it, People I respected. And when I seen how it did them, I thought, dear God, if it did that to them, well, uh, 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 in my book, I had them on a pedestal. And so wow. I said, if it took them down, it'll take me down. And so That's there right. was just some things I decided based on what I saw, I was not going to do. You see? Right. And, and, and while it won't send you to hell, you may live like hell while you're alive. And, and I right. think uh, m many times we don't see it from that perspective. You know, mm -hmm. uh, okay, getting high may make you feel good for a minute, but I mean, listen, right. I've been higher in the spirit. <laughs> see? Yeah, so, right. And so, right. man, listen, there is a high I can get in the Holy Ghost that take me higher than any drug can take me. You see? Yes, sir. And so the question is, Am I willing to pursue that as opposed to pursuing something that's superficial that won't last right. but a moment, as the Bible said, is temporary? You see? That's right. And so uh, you're so right, Pastor. Our job is to make sure we live by, we live, we live our lives by example so that they can yes, see sir. us live godly. You see? Yes, sir. And uh, I know one of the things 
someone said on Friday, uh, I said, be willing to uh, talk to the kids. Show them your scars from your mistakes. There be you go. You know, we're too holy to show them the, the scars. We're not showing them, you know, we're teaching them the word, but we're using these million dollar words and we're all holy, 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 but we're not beating them where they are. We're not breaking it down for them. We're not holding their hand. We're not taking the time to show them. And like you said, we're not showing them our scars. We're not showing them our example. We're not showing them where we failed at. We're showing them, oh, I don't know, but Jesus held me up and Jesus is the dog. Yeah, sometimes you done failed and sometimes you done messed up, but you don't have to be so high and holy that you can't admit that, you know what, I was wrong. Yes. I messed up. I, yeah. I, I'm imperfect. Mm -hmm. And because of that, thank God for grace and mercy, because it's the reason that I'm still here today. Yes, sir. Now, Pastor, now you said yeah. a mouthful there. Now, now that, that's a mouthful there. Because I, I think sometimes we come off as being uh, perfect. You know, yeah. and that's bad because if if I'm imperfect and all I see on you is perfect, uh, here's the reality. I try to measure up to you, you yeah. know, and then when I find out that you are not as perfect as you pretend to be. Well, now, dear God, I'm like, I'm like, if God can't keep you, he sure can't keep me. My you know? God, you preaching out God. You see? Yes, sir. And so many times. I know I tell I treat all the time. Listen, listen. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, you don't go. place your hopes in me. Yes, I try to live right. Yes, I try to do everything I can right. But if I screw, mess up, you keep following mm -hmm. Jesus. You follow what the word That's said. Right. And while you at it, pray for your boy. Pray for me. That's right. You see, because yes, here's the reality, Pastor uh, uh, Lonnie, and this is real. All of us are subject to fall if we don't keep our hands in God's hand. Yes, that's, sir. that's the Definitely. reality. All of us can go down with the blink of an eye if we don't keep our minds yes. and our hearts focused on Jesus. And so, yes, listen, thank you, man, for the call in. I appreciate so it, I got, bro. I got one more thing now. Come on. Well, come on. One. Come on I'm now. Have to go to Greenville, but I'm, I'm, I'm have to go there. Come on. I'm gonna have to go there. Come on, take us there. All right. So the, another thing that I'm having a problem with is the church spends so much time shouting and speaking in tongues uh -oh. that they're not edifying the people of God. Okay. So folks, see you shout, and and the and Pastor Paul tells us the first Corinthians, the 14th chapter. That's right. He said, "I'd rather speak five words in known language uh -huh. than a thousand words." In an unknown language, he said. The, he said whether I speak in known or unknown language, the purpose is to edify the body of Christ, to enlighten them with all that getting. He said to get an understanding, right. and people aren't getting an understanding. He said because if if you come in a service off the street and you see people shouting and speaking in tongues, you gonna think everybody crazy. Uh -huh. But let, if you gonna speak in tongues, he said let that be an interpreter. There, that's the interpret what's going on so that people will get that understanding and they'll know what's going on. But people are, the church isn't doing it. They're shouting and speaking in all these tongues and people are looking at them. I'm, I'm to the point, I'm doing the same thing. I step back and I'm like, okay, is this a God? I don't hear nobody interpreting. Uh -huh. Everybody's speaking in all these unknown tongues and nobody is being edified. Well, here's the thing. The Bible said, when a man speaks his unknown tongue, he speaks unto God. And so yeah. if I'm going to, if in the middle of service, get up and start speaking in tongues in the middle of service, then there should be an interpretation. And so we, we, yeah. we, 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 we got to understand that because I believe in, in the 16th chapter, the Apostle Paul comes right back at the end of the chapter. He says, and, and, and he encourages them to speak in tongues. And so mm -hmm. Paul is not downing or downgrading speaking in tongues, but what he's really yeah. saying is do it in an orderly fashion. If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna exactly. break if you're gonna break in the service and just you know cut the preacher off and start speaking in tongues, be say, be yeah. saying something. Make sure that when you finish, somebody is interpreting what you're saying because your speaking right. is unfruitful, which means no one knows what you're saying but God, because even yeah. you don't know what you're saying. You see, That's and right. so our job is to make sure that in the body of Christ, we are in order. And uh, yes. Pastor Newman, here's the reality. A, a lot of times we do stuff out of tradition and out of ignorance. That's the reality. That's exactly. 
We do stuff yeah. out of tradition and out of ignorance. Now, now, why I love praising God, hey, hey, look, now, I'm all for a good shout. But make sure you understand why you're shouting. Understand why yeah. you're praising. And then, you know, be willing to be willing to explain what you're doing because people yeah. need to be taught. One of the things yeah. I'm trying to do now, uh, and I've been trying for a minute, is to move back from someone's hard preaching and get into a lot of teaching because I realize the more I can explain, the more can be caught. Yeah. The more I can explain, the more uh, can be caught. And, you know, hey, I understand uh, being excited and, 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 and I'm cool with a hoop. But I heard an old yeah, yeah. I heard an old preacher say this one thing. He said, he said, listen, he said, he said, meat makes his own gravy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, 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 a good piece of meat makes his own gravy. What he was saying was, if what you're saying has substance, the gravy will come as a result. But if all you got is gravy and no meat, you're going to be hungry. <laughs> See? Yes, and so, yes, I like to eat. folks, there you go. And so this is a, we, 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 we have a lot, a, a lot of baby Christians who've been fed a lot on, on milk, but they don't have That's right. the, uh, the, the sincere meat of the word. And so when, when afflictions come and trials come and tests come, the Bible says they, they fade away because they were, they were excited, they were glad, but when the heat came, they withered away. And so right. we, we can't just receive the word with gladness. We got to sit down some time and be taught. Listen, embrace the word, yes, take notes. But here's the, the important part, Pethelani, I always say, don't just have a book full of notes if you're not going to use what the notes say. Mm. Because James said, know. James said, be doers of the word. And so right. if we are not going to do and implement what those notes tell us to do, you know, first of all, take those notes and check them by the word. Once I've checked them by the word, and then I ask God, help me now, God, do what the word and my notes tell me to do. Now I'm giving power to that word. You see, my and God. truth be told, once then I see it working, I don't mind doing it. When I can pray and see folks get healed, I don't mind praying. When I see yes, folks getting deliverance, I don't mind praying for deliverance. When yes. I see the word of God working in my life, I don't mind doing it, but I believe that what's keeping folks from doing the word is because uh -huh. too many folks, they don't see it working. And when folks wow. don't see, listen, the Bible says signs are supposed to follow the word. That's yes, the scripture. Yes. Signs are supposed to follow the word, which simply means that once the word is given, it's time now to, to, uh, to, to uh, uh, illustrate, to do it. Confirmation. It, it, there you go. There you go. Do listen, confirm the word with signs and wonders. That's what the word is designed to do. And so I think what happened is sometimes we don't get into that because uh unfortunately, sometimes those who preach it are walking in doubt themselves. And they preach it because it's the, it's the right thing to say. You know, it's the right thing to say. But when it comes to put uh rubber to the road, they back up because in their heart. It's full of doubt and fear and unbelief. Or as the word says, they're carrying dead man's bones around with them. And so, anyway, dear God, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. I'm preaching well, to the choir. They just got to learn how to be still and know that God is God. There's yes, so much going on in this microwave generation. There's so much with this internet. There's so much with the cell phone. There's so much with all that's going on that folk don't have time to sit still and experience God for who he really is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we we, we we are so busy with our jobs and we're so busy in a home and we're so busy with relationships that we don't, we, we have such an issue with relationships because our, the real relationship, the one who defines love, the very definition of love, we haven't mastered that yet. So we wonder why we fall out of relationship with people because we don't have, we don't know who love is. We have not related to love. We uh -huh. have not had and spent time with love to develop and figure out who love is and how he operates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, look, Sister, Sister Gloria said, can these bones live again? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> these dead bones live again. 
And so, yeah, preacher, it, it's time. It's time for us to, to uh, as believers, to step to step up to the plate and make sure we get this gospel of Jesus Christ out. Thank you, man. Yes. God bless you, okay, preacher. Pastor. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Thank you, man. Talk to you. All right. Bye. All right. Oh, hey, Reverend. Hey, how you doing? Bless you, child. Look at you. Woo! <laughs> Saka Zulu. Come on, girl. What's on your mind? Um, just to kind of piggyback on something that Larry said, as far as meeting the younger generation where they are, we have to find a way to make connections with them. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why so many of them turn to gangs and so many other things is because they they connect with them. They give them something tangible. Okay. They show them some type of evidence or some type of proof on why what they're doing or how what they're doing works or how it could be beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. And so because this is such a show me type of generation, yeah. everything is like right there in front of them. They have their phones, they have their iPads, they have their computers, they have smart TVs and everything else. And it's like everything, they can go to Google and they can search this and search that and everything gives them evidence. It points back to something. We have to find a way to point them towards God. We have to find a way to give them evidence in God's word, as well as the proof in our lives that mm -hmm. God really is the answer and that he'll work for them if they work his word the way that it's supposed to be done. That's true. That's true. We have to, because I believe when they begin to see the signs and wonders work in front of them and, and, and uh, in their lives, and then once they see it, then they'll believe it. You see? Absolutely. Because because, because that, one of the things that I tell my students all the time is like, okay, if we're reading a particular passage and I ask them a question, they answer it. Okay, now show me your evidence. How mm -hmm. did you come to that conclusion? Yes. And so I think that that's what they're looking for at this point. Okay, you're telling me that Jesus saves or you're telling me that he'll heal me. You're telling me that he'll deliver me or that he'll provide for me. Where's the evidence? Where's the proof? Right, and this right. goes back to showing them not only your mistakes that you've made, but also the successes that you had in following Christ. Mm -hmm. And if we can make that connection with them and we can show them the proof and the evidence, I think that it'll draw them. And once they're there, then we can pour into them. And by no means should we dummy down the word right. because the word is as simple as it gets. It's, it's there for you to follow and it's laid out plain and simple, but we have to find that way to make that connection, to draw them and bring them before we can begin to pour into them. Well, and I see you all that came up with a whole big old word, that word called sacrifice. And, and I think this is where it's missing is the, that thing called sacrifice, where we sacrifice what it is we want to do to make sure we do what we have to do so the next generation can see it in our lives and then begin to duplicate it. Because of not only sacrifice, but also dedication. Yes. Dedicating our lives to the fact that if we don't show them that they won't be the next generation, but they'll be a dead generation. Oh, yeah. Now, 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 you, now, that's a mouthful there because they're dying like, like flies in, uh, in this season. And it's not because it's not available, but because no one's reaching out to them, showing them a better way. And so uh, you are so true, daughter. Thank you, baby girl. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. All right, fam. Come on, listen. Uh, I, I seen Mother Sergeant said it needs to be a heart conviction more than just head knowledge. And that is so true. Listen, y'all, this thing about Christianity, man, has to move from the head and move to the heart. Uh oh, wait a minute. I got a call coming in. Let me see who is this. All right, caller. God bless you. Hello. Hey, God bless you. Who is this? This is Shamboo. Hey, Shambu. What's hey. going? What's going on, girl? Um, I just wanted to say, you know, a lot of times it starts at home. Okay. A lot of times we say things, and our children see other things. We come to church and we do one thing, but your kids see other things. Right. That's not showing what you're supposed to be showing. You're not living. We have to live 
this love of God at home and everywhere we go. And like Tiana was saying, this is a show me thing. You can say one thing while you're at home, but you're doing everything else at home. But when you come to church, it's like you're the angel. Right, right, right. You can't play both sides of the throat. You cannot do that. God is not honored by that. So we have to live it everywhere we go. We can't just live it in the church. We are the church. So if our children don't see us living the godly life, why would they come to church? And we wonder why some of our children don't come to church because they see a different lifestyle than what we're supposed to be living. And, and, and so what you're saying is we got to bring God from the church and bring him home with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got to lead by example like you were saying. You know, if, if we won't follow us, why would they follow us if we're not living the way we're supposed to live? And that's so true. That's so true. We, 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 we must live godly at home and live godly at church. And so our, uh, our lives must match in both spectrums, no matter where we are. Uh, the Bible said we are Christians first. And so uh, I know one of the things I was taught not when I was young, you were a Christian, whether you were at home or on the street, you know. And so, listen, I, I realize young people draw other young people. And so Absolutely. it's up to uh, uh uh, us to show those after us so that they can now in turn reach out and touch their peers because here's the reality if if, if I'm 20 years old and well let me use me when I was coming up uh, I was going to Christ Bible Center and we had a lot of young folks there I mean I think the, the, the 30 from 30 to 15 we outnumbered the adults really a bunch of us, but because we saw other folks our age living saved, or at least trying to be saved, as much as we wow. knew how, you know, when uh, we were in Bible class, we, our job was to see who was the first one that came to class, you know, in, uh, in mental school. Our job was to see who got the best grades. And so we would often cheat, you know, we get a group, look, we're going to beat them. And so our group would join uh, together and we try to make sure we outsmarted the other group in the Bible. And so we, we made it fun for us. And this is how. Well, you, know what uh, you know, these young people are really hurting. Whether yes. they saying it or not, they are really hurting on it is that. And they don't know how to ask for help. Right. But, you know, we got to be the one being the spoken one, you know, to meet them where they are and not trying to act like we above them. Right. Because we know a few words more than them. Ooh, come on now, Reverend. Right. That's true. And yeah. some people are not doing that. And so it draws them to go where they get their uh, they get attention. People are paying attention to them because they doing the wrong thing to get the attention because they're not getting it from where they should be getting it. Well see now you just stole my my uh, next comment. <laughs> because <laughs> because Jesus says uh, the word says, with loving kindness have I drawn you. Yes. And this is what the church is failing to do. And I, I think even society as a whole, we have gotten so engrossed in, you know, let me please me. Let me take care of me, me and my needs and what I need until we have forgotten about the love factor. And the word is yes. clear. He said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, and so I, I, I believe it all my heart if we get back to loving on people, not always criticizing. Now, do we make corrections? Absolutely. Do we help them get on the right road? Absolutely. We don't ignore wrongdoing, but we do it in love. You know, if, if, if uh, I see a guy getting high, you know, uh, I don't tell him, no, you're crazy, man. You're getting high. No. Hey, bro, what's up, man? Give me a hug. Come here. I love you, man. You see? And so that's what we're supposed to do. If we learn to show people love, you know, yeah. not, because here, Sharon, here's one thing I realized. The person doing wrong already know they're doing wrong. They Absolutely. do. I don't care what wrong thing they're doing. Something in them says this is not right. And so I don't I don't have to beat them with their wrongness. If I can use that word. But my job is to show them the love of Jesus. 
because I can yeah. look all through the scripture that Jesus approached people who were doing wrong. And instead of uh, 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 addressing what they did, he, he brought to them a, another way. He showed them love. And this is what I believe the body of Christ needs to do. If we're going to change our society, we have to first learn how to not only love ourselves, but love on others. Yes, yeah. you're going to have folk who do wrong. But as we learn how, how to love folks, we can draw them to Jesus Christ. So thanks, girl. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you so much for calling, Sharon. All right. Bye now. Bye -bye. Listen, y'all. I see Mother Sarkin say young folk are looking for a place to belong. And that's so true. They are looking for a place to fit in. Listen, see, when they go to uh, enjoy games, it's because the gang member accepts them. They accept them. And so that they, 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 they found a place that where they fit. Our job is to not accept what they do, but to make them feel wanted, make them feel like they are part. Don't be so gun hold it, push them away, kick them to the curve, but let us learn to love on them, treat them with respect and with honor. Look, y'all, my time is all gone. Look like I gotta pick this up again for part four of. The church's role. Uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got one more call. I gotta take this on y'all. Hold on, wait a minute. Let's invite Pastor Marsh in it. Let me see if I can pull him up right quick. Let me see. Hey, Pastor. Hello. Pastor Marsh, God bless you, sir. Yes, sir. Pastor. Yes, sir. The Bible says, train a child in the way he should go. Isn't it amazing? We can introduce a child to our nephews, our cousins, our uncles, but why is we not introducing them to Christ? Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, one of the things, and I agree with what Minister Satan says, we have to find a way to connect with them, okay? Because many of these children are in broken homes. Daddy gone someplace, mother gave them away, they in orphanages. And so some of them have become hard. Mm -hmm. And so the love that you and I and others can show them can turn, help turn things around for them because they have not received the power that's in love would come from the gospel. Uh -huh. And so we have to show them the power of the gospel. That yes, sir. What it is that changes us that can change them. Because love has that softening power, that softening power that draws, that draws them to you. And so we have to find a way, find a way. Because all, everybody don't train a child in the way they should go. Right. Some child, children do what they want to do. We are in competition now with cell phones, uh, iPads, and so we have to find a way to hold their attention because when they come to church, they text them in church. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. They call at each other in church. I've seen them. That's a, I've seen them sit next to each other and text. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, they're not listening. They're not listening to what's being said. Right, and right. So we, we have, if we see the, the idea is that we must introduce them to Christ. Yes, sir. Remember, if you remember back sometime, we had cartoon, spiritual cartoon characters, and they would go upstairs and look at them and right. watch them. And they would hold, that would hold their attention so they get a chance to meet Moses and all those characters of the Bible. Right, right. Okay? And so what we need to do is find a way to introduce them to Christ. Amen. So, so the changes in our lives could be visible to the change that could be in their lives. Amen. That's me so right. Great job. Uh, great job. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Okay, now. All right, right Tell you what, y'all, this has been absolutely great. I, I know you all are, are looking at the screen and saying, Pastor, what's going on? I don't know. Huh? The devil is mad, y'all. The devil is mad. And guess what? 
I'm glad he's mad. Glory to God. I'm glad that he is upset. Listen, y'all, listen. We're going to pick yourself back up again on Wednesday night. Listen, you don't want to miss Wednesday night as we dig further into the church's role in a changing society. Look, you all, if we are going to win, hear me, if we are going to win this generation, it's going to take all of us, you and I, all of us doing whatever it takes, hear me, whatever it takes to make sure we get we give this generation a chance to uh, make it to heaven when Jesus returns. All right, y'all, listen, my time is all gone. I pray you all will bless tonight. Come on, will you all bless tonight? Come on, give me some love, some hearts, some something. Let me know if you all were blessed tonight by the word. Tell you what, I pray, it is my prayer that you all were blessed by tonight's lesson. All right, listen, God bless all of you all, as we always say. We you have the God kind of faith, call those things which be not as though they were. And we know that God has us in the palm of his hand. Listen, I want to connect with you. Won't you shoot me an email? All right. Moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. If there's a, a topic you want to discuss, shoot me an email. Moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. If you have a prayer request, shoot me an email. Moments in the word 99 at gmail.com or you can call our, our prayer line 773-785-0412 at 773-785-0412 or call our online number 708-821-6527 all right y'all i love y'all so much god bless you all if this has been a blessing to you feel free uh by the leading of holy spirit you want to sow into uh, our ministry uh we have different uh, ways whereby you can give, uh, see our giving apps, and be a part of the giving process. I believe by the Spirit of God that this is good ground, and God will in turn bless you for your generous giving. All right, y'all, we got to go. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you right here on Wednesday night. God bless you. Be safe. Come on, come on. Big hug. Mm. Tonight, sweet rest tonight to you. And your family, God bless you. I love you. We are out of here.